Welcome. My name is Ed Fleener, and I'm the pastor at Gridley and Turkey Creek United Methodist Churches in southeastern Kansas. Today, we want to welcome you to our online worship service, and we're also excited to let you know that next Sunday on July 5th, of course, weather permitting, we plan to start our in-person, socially distanced, outside worship services at our normal worship times of 9.30 in the morning at the Turkey Creek Church, the pavilion outside, and at the at 11 o'clock worship service at Gridley in front of the church. We ask that you please bring your lawn chairs and also, based on my doctor's recommendations, I'll be wearing a mask and the doctors all recommended that any attendees also wear masks. Let us pray. Lord of hope, when the dark clouds assail, you ask us to bear the light of your love and truth. When fears seem to immobilize us, you give us courage and strength to bear your witness. We thank you for your call to us. We praise you for your sustaining love for us. We honor you with our lives and our service to you because it's in your son's name that we offer this prayer. Amen. Join with me in our call to worship, which is printed in the bulletin. Something new is stirring in our churches, O Lord. A different voice comes to us. Make us ready to receive this new word. Open our hearts and renew our spirits. Let us be the voice of welcome, the spirit of joy. Let us be those who bring the life-giving waters to others. Amen. And let's sing, let's join together as we sing the first verse and refrain of Trust and Obey. The words are in the bulletin. <clears throat> when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still. And with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. We just heard that we can be happy, and we can be blessed as we obey and trust in the Lord. Our Old Testament scripture reading today is Psalm 13, where the psalmist says he's happy because he trusted in the Lord's steadfast love. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I bear, bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all day long? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes, or I will sleep the sleep of death. And my enemy will say, I have prevailed, and my foes will rejoice, because I am shaken. But I trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because the Lord has dealt bountifully with me. Our New Testament reading today is from Romans 6, verses 12 through 23, where the Apostle Paul shows that by obeying the Lord, we can be saved through God's grace. Therefore, do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies 
to make you obey their passions. No longer present your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under the law, but you are under grace. What then? Should we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you, having once been slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to the form of teaching to which you were entrusted, and that you, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I'm speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to greater and greater iniquity, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in, regards, in regard to righteousness. So what advantage did you then get from the things of which you are now ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been freed from sin and now enslaved to God, the advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Our children's message today reminds us that we need to be welcoming to all people and at all times. Kids, if you want to gather close to the computer or however you're viewing this, uh, please do so. Have you ever seen a welcome mat? I suspect you have. Usually you'd see a welcome mat outside the front door to our home. And it usually has two purposes. One, it's a friendly reminder that you need to wipe the shoes off, wipe the dirt off your shoes so that you won't, won't track dirt or mud into your house. And secondly, it is placed outside the front door to be able to let people know that they are welcome in your home. What does the word welcome mean? It means to receive someone in a warm and friendly way. Are people always welcome in our homes? Do we welcome people into our home if their skin may be a different color from what ours is? Do we welcome people into our homes if they don't have as much money as we do? What about in our churches? Do you think we make everyone feel welcome in our churches? I hope we do. Do we speak to those people who are visiting our church that we may not know? If someone comes into our church and maybe they're not dressed the same way that we're, we are, do we still make sure that they are made to feel welcome? Jesus said, he who receives you receives me. If we were to turn that around, we'll still understand that if we don't welcome others into our homes and into our churches, it's the same as if we didn't allow Christ in. We wouldn't want to do that, would we? We would definitely want to let Christ in. Let's put the welcome mat out and let's be sure that we mean it. Let us pray. 
Dear Father, help us to remember that when we refuse to welcome others into our homes, into our churches, it's the same as refusing to welcome you. And help us do the right thing and welcome others and welcome you into our homes and churches. Amen. Our gospel reading today reminds us that we do need to welcome others and we need to be kind to them. Hear the words from Matthew 10, 40 through 42. And these are the words of Christ. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive that prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Dear Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Today I want to focus on the three verses from Matthew 10 that I just read, and they're also in the bulletin. The power of hospitality is really illustrated in these three verses. And the key words are welcomes and gives. Here Jesus summons his disciples to be men and women who welcome others as if they were welcoming Jesus himself. We Christians are called to be people who live with open arms, open minds, and open acceptance of others. And taking this idea a little further, Jesus says that giving a cup of cool water to one of these little ones is the ultimate expression of hospitality. Yes, we are tempted to really look after those that are powerful and wealthy, but Jesus calls on us to express the same level of concern to little ones, the marginalized, the voiceless, the abused, and the forgotten. Now, I read that the culture of the Middle East is really based on the honor of showing generous hospitality. I can remember from the trip to Israel that mom, dad, my brother, and I took about 50 years ago that the shopkeepers and others there around Jerusalem and other parts of the country were very, very hospitable, very friendly, and very welcoming. And I can remember another welcoming experience that took place about nine years ago while Charlotte and I were vacationing in Florida. We worshiped at Homestead United Methodist Church, and we were welcomed as though we normally attended there. The church had more than one Sunday service, but the service that we went to had about 40 worshipers. They were ordinary people like you and me. The people may not have been blessed monetarily, maybe as some of us are. They even have a food pantry in their church to serve the very large homeless population in Homestead. And many of the church attendees are actually homeless as well. The church welcomed us and were just so friendly. Everything we saw and experienced there seemed to indicate that they welcomed anyone and everyone, 
whether they were new to the faith or whether they were longtime followers of Christ. These examples of people welcoming our family to be with them just really mirror the example and the experience that Christ talks about in these three verses. Jesus summons his disciples to be men and women, to welcome others as if they were welcoming him. We Christians are called to be people who live with open arms, open minds, and open acceptance. And Jesus identifies giving a cup of cool water to one of these little ones as the ultimate expression of hospitality. There's another example of hospitality that I think many of us recall. Do you remember the TV show, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood? Mr. Rogers sang, won't you be my neighbor? May not have gotten the tune quite right, but that's the way he started his TV show. Many people don't realize that Fred Rogers was an ordained Presbyterian pastor and he encouraged and he really tried to educate children. He knew that welcoming a little child is really one of the greatest gifts that we can give to the world. Now, Matthew's use of the phrase little ones may have been about the children, like what Mr. Rogers might have been talking about, but it also could have meant really talking about his disciples. Maybe those that were new to the faith community, those who were young in their beliefs, or maybe even those that were at risk in the world. But it was definitely about inviting others into the journey, taking care of their needs, and taking care of the least, or the little ones. In these verses, Jesus prepared his disciples to go out of the world. Now, as mentioned, welcome is a, a pivotal ver word in this passage. The word welcome is used six times in these three verses. But welcome isn't really just the tolerance of those that may be different from us. How many of us that visit other churches, churches that claim to be welcoming churches, there really seems like there's a huge level of distrust. You know, probably most people that might be marginalized in whatever way tend to prefer a place that really has lots of hospitality, friendliness, and really includes people rather than just welcoming them, using the word welcome. Jesus used the word as a practice of hospitality for his disciples as they were on their mission of spreading the good news. If anyone welcomed one of them, they were indeed welcoming Jesus and by extension, Jesus' Father, God the Creator. And we can reclaim this word for the church by exhibiting the kind of welcome that Jesus is asking of us. I mentioned the people of Israel and the folks at Homestead United Methodist that provided that type of welcome. I'm also thankful to let you know that we have also felt this type of welcome that Jesus described. We felt it here at the churches and communities in Woodson County, in Coffee County. We felt welcomed by the people here, whether meeting with folks in worship, in their homes, in the grocery, in the gas station conversations, weddings, or celebrations of life. People have always shown us hospitality in their welcoming spirit. 
As we continue to go through life, welcoming others to love and to follow the Lord, we know that we are led by the, Lo by the Lord, our precious Lord, who takes our hand and is always with us, no matter the circumstances. Please listen to Michael Bolden, not Michael Bolton, but Michael Bolden, who's a longtime friend of the Fleener family, as he sings, Precious Lord, take my hand. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand, I, I am so tired. Precious Lord, and lead me home. We know that there are many joys and many concerns that people have. Uh, we have uh, the Independence Day celebrations taking place here in uh, Gridley. We have had graduations take place in Woodson County, in Gridley, and in Leroy, and I'm sure other places as well. And we have upcoming celebrations of life as well. We definitely want to keep all of those folks in mind as we go to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Lord, we talk so easily about being a friendly church. We like to think of ourselves as a place where everyone is welcomed, but our welcome should not just stay in our church buildings. We're called to adopt attitudes of hospitality to others, even if they don't return the favor. Instead, we're called to be willing to take the risk of hospitality in our workplace, our homes, our community, and everywhere we go. You reached out to people in all kinds of conditions, even those who may have been rejected by their society and their families. What they needed was compassionate greetings as well as friendship. Today, we name in our hearts and with our voices, those who need your healing love. We thank you that you reach out to them, to all those that we have named in our hearts. Oh Lord, just as you have welcomed us, regardless of our faults and our failings, let us also be a welcoming presence to all, to everyone in your name as we offer our lives and our prayers to you. In the name of our risen Lord, Jesus Christ, as we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom 
and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus told his disciples that in giving to others, they would find their reward. Let our offerings provide the cold water to the thirsty and welcome to the stranger. Let us rejoice as we offer our gifts. You can donate to your own church so that it can achieve its mission, whether it be to Turkey Creek United Methodist Church, Gridley United Methodist Church, or any other church that you might be associated with. And if you're not associated with a church, please contact us or go to a neighboring church so that you can use your gifts and talents to work for God's glory. Let us pray. God of love, you provide everything we need and you deal so bountifully for us. Our hearts rejoice in your love. We praise you as we share our gifts in the prayer that our offering may bring your blessings of living water to a thirsty world. Amen. Let's join together in the first verse of the hymn, Living for Jesus. Living for Jesus, a life that is true, striving to please Him in all that I do, yielding allegiance, glad-hearted and free. This is the pathway of blessing for me. O oh, Jesus, Lord and Savior, I give myself to Thee. For Thou in Thine atonement didst give Thyself for me. I owe no other master my heart shall be thy throne. My life I give henceforth to live. O Christ, for thee alone. Go out and welcome the world with God's love. Offer water to those who might thirst. Hope to those who despair and offer life to those who only know death. Go in God's steadfast love. May the blessing of God's abundant care bring you peace. Now go in peace, be blessed, and be a blessing to all that you meet. Amen and amen. <laughs>